if you followed my Maya modeling tutorial, then you'll already have unlimited undos, incremental save and auto save turned on. But if you didn't do that and you've just downloaded the project and you're picking up at the animation stage, then follow the link on screen and that'll show you how to turn those things on. They're very important and it's worth doing. As for the animation preferences, they're slightly different, so I'll have a look at those now. To get to them, we're going to click on Windows, Settings Preferences, and click on Preferences. And this brings up this little window here. And we're going to start by looking on the Settings section. So if I go down to here, basically the only thing that we're interested in here is what frames per second we're working at. Now I do tend to leave it at the default film 24 frames per second, but it's important to know that you can change that from this setting. So if I do this drop down menu here, you can see that you've got um, 25 frames per second, which is the PAL um, standard. NTSC is 30 frames a second, which is pretty standard everywhere, um, things like the internet. Uh, or you can go higher, or you can do kind of whatever you want. But I'm going to set mine to film 24 frames per second because that's fine for what I need. The next thing we'll look at is what the default tangents are set to in Maya. So to do that, we're going to go down to the next section, which is animation. And you can see there's a lot going on there, but the bit we're interested in is what the default in and default out tangents are. And you can see there are a lot of different options, and you can change those to whatever your preference is, which is why I'm showing you really, because we're not actually going to change anything. I quite like it to start on auto. Uh, but you could change them to any of the others. And we'll find out what all those mean a little bit later when we're looking at the graph editor section of the tutorial. But for now, we're just going to set those both to auto, and we're happy with that. Once you've done all that, you can just click on save and everything's set up. We can now move on to the next bit. What the next bit is, is to make sure that the project itself and specifically the hierarchy for the solar system is set up ready to be animated in the way we want to animate it. And the way we'll check that is by looking in the outliner to see what the um, hierarchy looks like. So we're going to go to Windows and Outliner, which will bring up this little bad boy. Whoosh. And we're interested in this bit here, the sum, because if we expand this, there we go, you should see that we've got a little hierarchy going on. So there are, um, I think, three planets, four planets in total, four planets in total, um, planet, planet one, planet two, planet three, and they all belong to the sun, and the moon belongs to planet, and ring belongs to planet two, in my case. So make sure that that's all set up like that. If it's not, make sure that it is, so arrange it in the way that I've got mine so that when we get to that stage, everything will work properly. Uh, and then we can close the outliner. Yay. In the next step, we'll have a little bit look at the interface and how it relates to animation, and we'll start setting some keyframes and actually get things moving a little bit.